Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Let's move on to Africa. Wall Street Journal's reporting that China tightens its grip on the East African port of Djibouti. China Merchants Port Holdings is asserting control of operations at Djibouti's Dorale Container Terminal, maritime officials say. China Civil Engineering Construction Corps and China State Construction Engineering Corps have built a multi-purpose cargo facility next door to handle cars, livestock, steel and other goods. The Djiboutian government has repeatedly said it alone controls the Dorale Terminal and has told the U.S. it has no plans to cede control of its maritime assets to Chinese state operators. But some U.S. officials have expressed concern that it could be a matter of time before that happens. Djibouti stands at the entrance to the Red Sea, which, are, which about 12% of all seaborne trade traverses on scores of ships using the Suez Canal. There are no other ports along the East African coastline with the infrastructure to handle, store and trade cargo between ships. It is also a gateway for East African markets with the potential for greater volume of imports and exports. China has a military base in Djibouti, is Djibouti's top financier holding about half of the country's public debt. We are baffled by the US inaction, the DP world officials said. All supplies for their base come through the port, and if it falls in Chinese hands, there could be significant problems. If you want to send cargo to East Africa, you call it Djibouti, it becomes a gateway from the start with no real competition that gives it a lot of potential. 6th of August last year, I was writing about the Indian Ocean, but by extension the Red Sea area and a port race. And I was saying today from Massawa, Eritrea, admittedly on the Red Sea to Djibouti, from Berbera to Mogadishu, from Lamu to Mombasa to Tanga to Bagamoyo to Dar es Salaam through Beira and Maputo, all the way to Durban and all points in between were witnessing a port race of sorts as everyone seeks to get a piece of the Indian Ocean port action. China, the BRI initiative, the Gulf countries who now appear to see the Horn of Africa as their hinterland, Japan and India to a lesser degree are all jostling for optimal geo-economic positioning, which seems what China has achieved in Djibouti. 2nd of July last year, after 90 days of Prime Minister Abe being in power, I, was, uh, I wrote an article called Ethiopia Rising, and in it I said, you know, around this date in July, he said, we are in debt, we have to pay back, but we can't. And secondarily, we aren't able to finish projects we have started. And with that, he announced his economic pivot. Of course, the downside risk of all this infrastructure is plain to see. And Sri Lanka and the tale of its Hambantota port is now a cautionary tale. FX reserves were at less than a month's worth of imports and something needed to be done. And I said then he needs to execute real quick on the economic front. But if he levels the playing field, a whole troop of folks will be looking to pile in. That troop will include his very own diaspora, foreign investors, and I'm sure Safaricom. Then in an interview with the FT, which I picked up via Addis Standard, he said, my model is capitalism. Plans telecoms privatization to promote competition. Ethiopia is also likely to auction off Spectrum to two additional telecoms companies with Vodacom, Orange, MTN and others expected to bid. In Zimbabwe, the central bank has been selling dollars at a rate of one US dollar to 2.5 RTGS, a level which bankers have criticized as too low, but which Muthulin Cube said was appropriate for now, calling it an initial trigger point. He declined to disclose where Zimbabwe got credit lines to launch the RTGS currency or the size of those credit lines. Um, a dealer at a bank which operates on Zimbabwe's interbank markets said launching the RTGS at three to the dollar or higher would have been better to encourage US dollar sellers. 
There are a lot of dollar buyers, but no sellers because the rate is not high enough. And I said on this weekend, I said it was the right move, but I would definitely be short at two and a half if it ever gets there, which is entirely unlikely. I said Zimbabwe finally devalued and overhauled its dysfunctional whack and even voodoo FX regime. Um, the introduction of a Zim dollar will be just in name, but the RTGS dollar is essentially the Zim dollar. Ten diabetes predicting a six to eight range, governments at two and a half. I would say two and a half is Hail Mary economics. South Africa all share up 5.96% year to date. As I said, Tito Mbweni, the South African finance minister, delivered a currency Yehudi menu in level masterclass last week. He delivered his budget speech, began by presenting the alloy ferox, which he says is resilient, sturdy, and drought resistant. Then started with all the bad news, the proposed and expensive rescue of ESCOM, and all of this sent the RAND into an almighty tailspin and an orgy of selling. At one point, the RAND was down 2% on the day. Then he rode back and he had all the RAND shorts where he wanted them. The RAND ended the day marginally positive. Mr. Boweni's budget speech and the finesse with which he skewed his delivery, negative first and then gradually more positive, set the trap. He exhibited a feel for the markets which was seriously noteworthy. The RAND is firm to 13.857. Moving on, Egypt's Al-Sisi devalued big and early, and the consequences of that bold economic pivot is there for all to see. Egyptian GDP is likely to have a five handle in 2019, and the economy has overtaken South Africa. I wrote an article on the 18th of Feb about Nigeria deciding. Um, we're still awaiting that decision, uh, but it looks as if President Buhari has remained in the lead. Nigerian all shares up 4.04% year to date. It was the worst performing market, down 50% in dollar terms during Buhari's first term. Uh, Ghana Stock Exchange Index is down 1.6%. Moving on to Kenya, the shilling has appreciated by 1.6% in 2019 and is testing the key 100 level. Have a look at the chart, we're at 100.18. The Nairobi all shares up 10.4% year to date. Kengen, and I must commend them, bagged a 7.6 billion shilling Ethiopia geothermal deal. This is the front page from the Business Daily. In my analysis for after the half year results, I said it was egregiously undervalued. I stand by that. Emma Kiba, which is the mobile phone uh, based uh, fixed income investment, $30 minimum. Um, Jeff Odunda of the Nairobi Securities Exchange says this is technically a one and a half year bond because it is a reopening. If you compare that to a one year instrument, it is a very attractive one for anyone going for a short term instrument. The amount is 250 million shillings, 10 is three years, one and a half years to maturity, coupon 10% per annum, half yearly, tax exempt, minimum investment 3,000 shillings. Interesting article in the Business Daily how rate capping has cut the asking price of small lenders. Valuations have dropped off a cliff post the interest rate cap legislation in 2016 in line with the plunging return on equity multiples. They're very bearish, saying future acquisitions may occur at significant discounts to book unless value can be demonstrated. SIB data shows that as of the end of 2017, the average NPL ratio for Tier 3 lenders was 18%, 5.7% higher than the industry's average. Thank you for stopping by.